core parts of the stroke happen in less than a second. So it's hard to visually analyze the entire stroke because it happens so fast. So I'm breaking it apart into the four parts. There's the hinge, the catch, the power, and the release. This video is all about the second part of the stroke, and that's the catch. The catch occurs after the hinge. The catch is the fastest part of the four parts of the stroke. I'd like to break the catch into several parts. The parts of the catch are you're hinging a little bit more while dropping your arms. You're going to hinge about another 20 degrees into the water. Keeping my back straight, head up, and once your blade touches the water, you're going to twist a little bit more on your shoulders to push in until the blade is submerged. You want the blade to be fully submerged when you push it in. When I come in, as I lower, lower down, I want to extend that arm at the bottom as I'm pushing into the water. And you're pushing it in with your bottom hand, not your top. So you're not pushing down with the top hand. The top hand is just getting ready to brace and bracing. So use your bottom hand to push in without cavitation. And then lock your top arms as straight as possible to get ready for the power phase where you're bracing the top, the top of the blade. The bottom of the blade is braced in the water. You don't want your blade moving through the water. And the mere fact of sitting up is going to cause my arm to pull, my bottom arm to pull against the blade. Now what will cause the blade to move in the water is by having too much angle on it. And when you apply power, you're pushing that angle down. It's allowing water to escape past your blade. Other things that cause your blade to move in the water is if you twist the blade to an angle, it'll cause the water to rush past to one side or the other, depending on what angle you have. Now when you cause cavitation in the water, you create bubbles in the water. And those bubbles will be attracted to your paddle and they'll sit on your blade face. And those bubbles will prevent the water from being able to grab onto your paddle. It'll allow the water to slip past your paddle as you pull in the water. So you want to avoid any type of bubbles on your blade because you want your blade anchored in place. So the best way to anchor your blade is to push it in without bubbles or cavitation and having it perpendicular to the hull of the boat. And so all of your energy is applied on that, on that blade face and it's pushing against the water this way and it's pulling the canoe to the blade. Now imagine that you're in an ocean of wet cement. Now fortunately I have cement all around me, but I'm pretending that it's wet cement. And when I make the catch, what I'm doing is I'm making a hole inside that cement. Now fortunately, here in my garage, I have a hole in the cement. So that's gonna simulate my catch. So when I drop down and push in to make the catch, that blade does not move in the water. It stays in place. And now I'm bracing the top of the handle. I'm not pushing it forward at this point. All I'm doing is bracing. So I am bracing. And when I sit up, this, the act of sitting up is going to make me pull against that lower hand. And I'm going to feel equal pressure on both hands, but I'm not pushing with the top hand. All I'm going to do is begin sitting up, but both parts of the blade, both ends of the blade are braced in place. They're not moving, and I don't want them to move. I want it to stay as though I'm anchored in cement, and I'm pulling the canoe to the blade. You do not want to put your paddle in the water and have it sliding back as you're trying to apply power. I can't emphasize enough that the catch is very important to the stroke. You have to make a good entry so that you want it to stay in place. So it's pushing smoothly in so that you don't, if you hear a sound, 
you want to get rid of that sound. You don't want to hear a plop because that, that means there may be bubbles are forming on the blade. You want to push in a smooth entry to make that hole and then position the blade face so it's perpendicular to the canoe so that you have maximum anchorage of that blade so that both the bottom and top of the blade are now braced and you're moving the canoe past that hole you just made. Catch is simply lowering your blade into the water. There are three possible ways of getting that blade to the water. So if you're out here on the hinge, one thing I can do is just leave my arms in place and just hinge further all the way down. But then I feel a weakness in my back. So you don't want to do that. And the other way is you're out here at the hinge and I could just simply lower my arms until the blade goes into the water. But then you're at a position that you're not going to have very much power, a very short stroke. So you have to have a combination of the two. You have to, after the hinge, you want to hinge further and drop your arms and push in, push in, making a hole into the water, bracing the top of the paddle. And you want to do that so that your back is comfortable when you go to sit up. And that's all I have to say about part two of the stroke, which is the catch.